Islam, we believe there's one God, one creator, one all-powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing deity. We don't say he's a man, we don't say he's a woman because we don't feel those are qualities of a creator. Those are human qualities, right? He doesn't get married, he doesn't have kids, he doesn't have roommates, he doesn't get into fights at home, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't get tired. He's like that great creator that created the universes, not just the universe we live in, but more than that. The, the, the whole world and every creation is created by that one great creator. And he has no beginning, he has no end, he's not like us, right? And he didn't create us, create, create us without purpose. So he told us we were created for a purpose. And the purpose of our creation is first and foremost to recognize our creator and then to worship our creator. And, and that's why you're here. That's why Allah guided you here to learn about him, right? So that creator sent messengers to teach us about this message. So Abraham, Moses, David, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. We love all of them. We respect all of them. They brought that message to worship that one creator, right? Don't worship idols. Don't worship people. Don't just go kill people and rape and pillage. Those are all things that are harmful to us as a society. So our creator forbid that, including alcohol and pork and other things like that. And how will we know he sent messages, right? So, for example, uh, there is the Psalms of David, for the, the Torah, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, and then you have the, the New Testament uh, based on the message that was revealed to the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. But as you know, I don't know if you guys study history much, but those have all been corrupted, right? So you had the original uh, message that was given to Moses, then you had Babylon, the fall of Babylon, and the loss of a lot of those, and then you had the Dead Sea Scrolls, and then so you, you're kind of patched together through songs and stories and hymns. So the original has all been lost, but we have some message from it left. The New Testament, which was originally based on the writings of the people who d delivered a message through Jesus, peace be upon him. But that was in Aramaic. And the, today's Bible is mostly based, based on Kone Greek scriptures. And even between that, there are, there are contradictions. But the last of them is the Quran. And this is a gift for you. It's free. This is the, this is the last message. And this has been perfectly preserved. How? In the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they memorized it. And even today, we have brothers here that have memorized the entire Quran from the beginning chapter till the end, right? So it's memorized and we have written manuscripts that are carbon dated to the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So this is that last message. I have a question. Please. Does your creator only support man and women marriage? So when you talk about uh, marriage between man and woman, it's not about what my creator supports or our creator. First thing, there is a natural inclination towards how species further themselves, right? any species that you take the natural inclination between man and woman right that's how you have kids people may have their own feelings people may have their own inclinations but the natural method that our creator has set is between a man and a woman thank you sure any other questions mm -hmm. all right if you have questions come on back take this as a lighter read uh, and then you can read that as well and we welcome you back thank you so all of the prophets were muslim Right? Because they all submitted their will to their creator. So that way, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them, they were Muslims. They all brought the same message to worship one creator, right? What's the first commandment? Hear, O Israel, your Lord is one, right? Not three, not two, not siblings, one. And the second commandment, don't worship driven idols. Don't make idols, don't make statues, don't pay homage to these things instead of God. Unlike what you see in churches today, even if you look here, you'll see statues and, 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 and idols everywhere, right? You go to a church, you'll see a big, depending on Catholics or Protestants, you'll find different types of images that are worshipped instead of God. Even if you look at the Christmas tree, you know the Christmas tree has been forbidden in the Bible. I mean, it's a pagan symbol. Exactly. See, you know it's a pagan in Jeremiah, right? I uh, I just can tell you history. I know a little history. Excellent. So you know that 25th of December has nothing to do with Jesus. It was a pagan festival, right? And today, Christians all over the world are celebrating it 
knowing that it's a pagan festival. The, the tree, Santa, all of that, elves, like what does that have to do with Jesus? It's commercial. It's commercial. It's money making, right? Everything is about money, man. Right? Except for us here. Like none of us are paid. We're all volunteers. That's what I like yeah, to hear. There you go. So take a, take a book, read Amen. something. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> there you go. Inshallah. Inshallah, you know. Catholic Church, you see a lot of the answers are based on what they will find in the in the Bible, right? right. And and you know, historically, the Bible has been uh, changed as far as if you look at what happened at the Council of Nicaea right. and look at King James, for example, translating different versions. Different right. versions. Right. Excellent. I have uh, Bible study on Sundays. Excellent, so I excellent. Yeah. I used to go to Bible study for years, <laughs> Wednesdays and Sundays, two oh, different churches, oh, right? Yeah, Tuesdays and Sundays I go. Yeah, I, have, I used to have Wednesdays at Horizon um, and then Sundays at a different church, which is called Church of the Rock now. Um, so if you look at the Bibles, for example, this is the New World Translation. Right. This is the one that Jehovah's Witnesses mostly use, right? Uh, and this is the King James Version. That's the one that I use. Right, oh, which originally the Catholic Church condemned. Excellent. Right. So let me show you something, right? Here, under Matthew, chapter 18 verse 11 18 verse 11 right. in matthew right. here you just have an asterisk the whole verse is missing because they felt this was not preserved right but if you go to the one you read which is the king james version and you go to matthew 18 11 same verse right, right. if you go to 18, 11, it says, For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. So you see, in this Bible, you have a verse that's not in the other Bible, right? right? In Luke uh -huh. chapter 9, verse 56, For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Right? This is chapter right. Luke 9, 56, right? right? I'm going to leave this open. We'll pick up this Bible again. And you look at the same chapter under Luke 9, 56, it says, so they went to a different village. Oh. <laughs> right, it, it has different Yeah, exactly. So now, it's not a translation, it's the issue, the whole verse is different. Right. One says the son of man, one says that he went to a different village. Right. In, in 56 here, it also has, and they went to another village, but the whole right. beginning section is taken out, right? If you look at the Bible, it, the King James Version that you have, and just within, within itself, how did Judas die, right? Here in Acts, you should ask your Bible studies teacher this, right? In Acts 1, he died on the cross, right? Judas, yeah. right? So this is a good point. According to the Gospel of Barnabas, he died on the cross right. in place of Jesus. Right. But that's not one of the canonized works. Here it has, now this man, Judas, purchased a field with the wages of inequity. And falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all of his entrails gushed out. Pretty nasty, yeah, yeah. disgusting. Pretty yeah. But see, so, so how did he die here? He bought a piece of land with that money right. and then falling headlong, right? He was fell and his gut gushed out, right? Yeah. Now the same Judas. Wow, that looks so complicated, all that stuff you have in there. Yeah, I study. Um, wow. The same Judas in the same New Testament In Matthew chapter 27, verse 5, right? Matthew 27, 5, he then threw down the pieces of silver in the temple. Now, he didn't buy a piece of land here. He took that money and he threw it in a temple right. and departed and went and hanged himself. Oh, right. right? So now we have three different accounts. Right. One, as you mentioned, which is from the Gospel of Barnabas, which is not in the canonized books, where he was crucified instead of Jesus. Then you have one that is in Matthew where he hanged himself. And then you have a third where he fell headlong and his guts came out. So which one was it? Right? So this is, the, this is the issue we get to where things have been changed over time. Things have been corrupted. Translations, the oldic writings of these are in Koine Greek for the New Testament, right? Which was not the language of Jesus. Right? Aramaic was the language of Jesus and his followers, right? So a lot of that has been changed. Here, for example, even the Old Testament, right? In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3. Okay? 
First Samuel chapter 15, verse 3. Now go and attack Amulek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them, but kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. That seems pretty, pretty gruesome, yeah. right? Who orders the killing of infant nursing children? Oh, no, the devil, right? right? But this is from God in the Bible, right? So, so exactly our point that, yeah. that somebody, whether it's through the whispers of devils or, or, or greedy men or, 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 or translations, has corrupted that pure word, that pure revelation that came to the prophet Moses and Abraham and, and David and Jesus. Uh, and, and we love all of them. All of them had one message. We, we say peace be upon them. That's how much we respect each one of them. You will never see a Muslim disrespect the Prophet Jesus or make cartoons or make fun. Never. We love Jesus. Peace be upon him. Why is there so much um, violence in the Muslim land? What, what is all that? I sure. So if you want to talk about well, there the... there is in the United States too. I mean, well, so, so, it's so, everywhere. So let's talk about that, right? Yeah. If you want to talk about the religion, you will yeah. find more violence and, and, and killing and murdering and all of that and beheadings and, and murders in the Bible than you will in the Quran. I, I right? know, because I, I, I'm studying the Bible. Excellent, now. so yeah. we're, we're already agreed there. Yeah. So from a religious perspective, Islam is a religion that brings peace, that brings justice. Uh, that's the religion. Now politically, the Muslim lands were colonized, most of them, right? right. So it's not like Arabians got up and went to England, but you did see the British, for example, with East India Trading Company, they went into India, caused wars amongst each other. They went and took over the French in Africa, the, the Italians, the Portuguese. Everybody went and colonized these lands and, and with trickery and, 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 you know, deceit and Lawrence of Arabia and all that stuff. And they caused a lot of killing. For example, in, in Libya, there's Umar Mukhtar. He was a Quran teacher. The Italians went and they killed the Quran teachers. They killed the scholars, right? Killed little children, massacred them, right? You have Churchill in India and Khaybar and the battles where they killed kids and killed scholars and all this stuff. This is history. When the Muslim world was colonized and once they had revolution to try to free themselves from the colonial powers, like we did in America against the British, right? At that time, everything went into chaos now, right? So what happened is everybody's open. Then what happens is Western powers go and, and support one against the other for political cause. For example, when Iran was getting strong, the United States, we supported Saddam, Saddam Hussein. We gave him weapons. Rumsfeld, pictures, shaking hands, giving him weapons, giving him all these things, right? And then he used those weapons to attack Iran at the bequest of America, right? Then later, when him and Kuwait got into it, we went and attacked him. First he was the good guy, then he became the bad guy. <laughs> like when the Russians were attacking Afghanistan, we went to what later became the Taliban. We went to those freedom fighters. Reagan was their freedom. He met with them in the White House, big turbans, and, and he's like, here's Stinger missiles and here's weapons. You're freedom fighters. Fight them Russians, right? And when the Russians were gone and they made their own government, even though they had nothing themselves to do with 9-11, we went in it. What did Iraq have to do with 9-11? Where are the weapons of mass? It's all a game to destabilize the region. So then we went in and those same people and the same principles now became terrorists. Yeah. Why did we invade Vietnam? You see what I'm saying? So those problems, ISIS, who, who started ISIS? Wait, let, let's talk about it. Was there an ISIS before we invaded Iraq? There was, there was no such thing as ISIS. I, yeah, I was what, told no. There weren't, historically, right? Oh. In Syria, before we pumped a revolution and then betrayed them, as we did with the Kurds, with Saddam. So when you destabilize a region, then these kinds of things happen. Like same things we find in many countries in South America right. that are not Muslim, in South Sudan, for example. Right, exactly. Because when Western powers, for their own political interests, destabilize areas, go and invade them whenever they want, enslave them whenever they want, take their resources, then right now in Yemen there's war going on, right? right? The U.S. is backing one side, right? Iran is backing the other side. Right. It's a game being played. Uh, yeah. But those are politics. I know. We come to talk about religion. I don't represent any country other than the United States. That's where I'm from. This is my citizenship. This is right. But as a religion, this is the religion that teaches peace. That the word Islam comes from Aslama, which means to submit. 
and that has the same root word as seen la mim salam peace that's why when muslims see each other they say salam alaikum peace be upon you allah says i'm calling you towards the place of peace right even the verses about fighting if you look at them if you look at the next verse it will say if they incline towards peace incline towards it right but we as muslims believe that many of those political groups like isis or whatever else are being utilized and being supported by others to destabilize the regions uh -huh. Like, like we did, America did in South America as well. Right. You know, sometimes you'll support this side, sometimes that side right. to, for political gain, right? Yeah. Russia does the same thing, China does the same thing. Every right. country has their own political right. interests. Right. But that's not religion, that's politics. Right, politics. Look, look, at, look at history, right? When Saladin, Salahuddin, which is mispronounced as Saladin, right? When he had Jerusalem, he was tolerant towards Christians and Jews right. and Muslims, historically, right? When the Muslims ruled Spain under Andalus, they were tolerant towards Christians and Jews and Muslims. But when the Crusaders took, what did they do? Rape, pillage, massacre, right. but this is history. Right. You can't forget history, otherwise well, you repeat it. Repeats it, it repeats yeah, itself. Right. Look, look, at, look at Spain, the Spanish Inquisition, when they went, they didn't just, they, they genocided Muslims. But even other Christians that didn't believe, they, they massacred, finished them. Jews genocided. Right. Look at what Hitler did. Look at what Stalin did. None of that is Islamic. World War II, World War I, none of them were started by Muslims, right? right? So those are politics. We don't blame all Christians for Hitler. Just like we shouldn't be responsible for Osama. That's an individual. Right. He's an individual. They have political goals. Right. Stalin was an atheist, but he killed more people than probably anybody else that I know of in modern history, right? right. Um, under atheism, communism, right? But as a religion, you will find, and uh, these are all free. And I'd love for you to give this to you as a gift, oh, for you, you to read and learn about the, the message of Islam, the message of peace, the message that is not from us, but from our Creator. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You. you have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. And if you want, I'll give you this as well to learn about the Prophet Muhammad. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.